John Coles heads there on an operation to find Clark's illegal gains. Jamaica, where it is in, in the world, is a fantastic stopping off point for people bringing cocaine from South America. And obviously with the historical links with Jamaica, with the wind rush and people coming over here in the 1950s, many of the people who live in Jamaica at the moment have relatives and friends in the United Kingdom who they can use as cover when they're engaged in drug dealing. There's this thing about getting rich quick because I'm not going to live for very long. And, uh, you know, fast cars, uh, women, uh, the bling bling, all that type of thing. Uh, and some of them have got the attitude, I've got to get rich quick because I'll be dead by the time I'm 25. And quite often, in many cases, that's true. Clark spent most of his time in Kingston, where he was known as Father Fowl. Trident believes he lived uptown, away from the crime-ridden downtown where drugs, guns and murder are a fact of life. There were 37 murders here last week and it's the highest level of murder overall for several years. I mean, if we had 37 murders in London, we wouldn't be able to cope. And the Met's got the best murder investigation teams in the world and the highest clear-up rate. And they just don't have the experience or the skills to investigate all those murders. And hopefully, through us working jointly with them, particularly on the father Fowl case, they can learn from us and perhaps have the opportunity to start to investigate those murders properly. John Coles is shown around by a British officer working in Kingston. It's not safe to drive unless you know the city well. Part of the reason why we're out here is to look into Owen Clark, Father Fell, who was arrested by Trident and convicted earlier this year. Uh, a major drug dealer engaged in gun crime in London, but with roots back in Jamaica and other Caribbean islands. Where we're going at the moment is uh, one of the premises that was uh, linked to him. Can you just tell us a bit about it? Yes, up here on the left-hand side is La Rousse. This is the focal point for a British link-up that met every year, where obviously those involved in crime across the different parts of the UK used to come out and lord themselves. Uh, we'd travel up in high-class vehicles to show how well they had succeeded in their criminality within the UK. Shame they didn't put a bit of money into building the roads a bit better as well, then. <laughs> Oh, Clark was a major player in Kingston. His reputation as a music promoter covered up his drug running and helped launder his profits. His famous British link-up parties drew thousands from Jamaica and the UK. Trident work with the Jamaican constabulary to search for Clark's illegal earnings. Between them, they've identified five properties they think he owns. They all need to be searched. They'll use the Trident approach, early, mob-handed, and at the same time. Trevor Gardner and four other Trident officers join the Jamaican constabulary and defense force in the biggest operation Jamaica has ever seen. The investigation surrounds one Owen Roger Clark, who is more popularly known in Jamaica as Father Fowl. He was convicted in the UK in June of this year and sentenced to 13 years imprisonment. What we're doing here is pursuing the financial investigation into his money laundering activities. On gaining entry to the premises, we ask that the MIT team clear the area and do the search for drugs and guns. Following that, the FID team will do a thorough search for documents as it's a financial investigation. It'd be nice to find where his money is and quantify exactly what properties he's got, how many cars he's imported, um, and, and try and figure out somehow how wealthy he is. The ultimate would be finding a bank account in his name um, or one of his names with millions and millions of, of pounds in it, but we don't know. We don't know. Because some of the properties are in a dangerous area, the Defence Force use helicopters. The concerns are that there could be hostilities. We'll see what happens. I mean, it's, it, it could go horribly 
wrong, but then again, everything could pan out and we have a massive result. Trevor Gardner's convoy heads to an uptown mansion. The Jamaicans aren't wasting any time. To beat the traffic and jump the lights, they travel on sirens. This convoy heads through the no-go downtown area of Kingston 11. There are two adjacent houses which they think Clark owns. He may have run his drugs empire from one of them. One of the houses is quickly surrounded. The occupants come quietly. But next door, there's a standoff. People inside refuse to let the police in. It's illegal for Jamaican police to bash doors in like Trident would. After 10 minutes, a female officer persuades them to open up. They can now search for evidence. So far, the only aggression encountered in this hostile area is from a goat. Inside, the occupants confirm that Clark owns one of the houses. It's worth £50,000. They also find £5,500 in cash, and paperwork proves more money has been sent here from the UK. Trevor Gardner's convoy arrives at a mansion in the hills. The Jamaicans think it is Clark's home. They don't know who's living there now. Trevor and the financial investigators wait as armed police ensure the house is safe. They, they got in quite quickly. No gunfire, so I'm happy. With the house secure, the search gets underway. So far, no paperwork links Clark to this property. It's possible that I could have known the person by seeing the person, but knowing the person's name. Because I've known a lot of people. If you bring certain people before me, I can say, yes, I know this person, but the name, I might not know the name, but um, that name don't clicks. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know who is going, Clark. You must have had some sort of intelligence. And if you have intelligence to have come to search the source, it's either mischievous or, or something. She says that she knows nothing about it. But there are a couple of things that will make a bit of sense. So, yeah, just uh, some addresses and names and... Um, things don't fit, fit, aren't fitting. So, we can keep probing, keep looking, see what we find out. And get him for a drink. Excuse me. The occupiers prove that they have owned the property for years. The intelligence suggesting this is Clark's home was wrong. In a third area of Kingston, the Jamaican police arrive at an exclusive complex. They think Clark owns two apartments here worth over a hundred thousand pounds each. There's no one in. But police find financial paperwork about Clark's music events, which they think he used to launder profits. There's also three thousand US dollars and eight hundred pounds.